All right, everyone, welcome back to Automotive Anatomy. Thank you, Brian, for making the time for us, man. I appreciate it. So uh, tell us, man, what do you drive? As you can tell, I drive a 1990 Honda Civic wagon. It's K-swapped with a K20 Z3, um, LS six-speed LSD tranny, you know, a lot of K2 parts, RVC manifold, like I said, K2, a lot of K2 parts in. Uh, shift tech and straight line motorsports tuck radiator cool and we'll get into into that in a little bit how long have you had the car and where'd you pick it up i've had the car for two and a half years three years already and Whoa. i picked it up actually in palm springs from the original owner okay so original owner two three years you did all this so that means take us back a little bit uh to the you know uh, your history of cars my history of cars was previously when i was younger i was into a lot of fast cars and then I got into being into the slam scene because of the whole law and everything else. So it was easier to get away with shit compared to a modified motor and being state referee. So I went into the whole rare parts, Japanese parts, and basically it was awesome because I didn't have a license for about 10 years. And then I got my license back and I said, fuck it, why not go back to my original roots? <laughs> you know, so that's right. what I did. So hopefully we're gonna be smarter this time, then, right? <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> At times, you know, you can't always you can't always be smart, but you know, sometimes your foot gets better if you. Yeah, the, that heavy foot, right? Yeah. So why a wagon? Why a Civic EF? Honestly, because as you can tell, I'm not one of those little small people. So and hatch, I'm too big for it. I feel like I'm too big for it. The sedan, same thing. Just the roof line is a lot shorter than the wagon. My only option was I got kids now. A wagon's the only way to go. And I've always been into the wagons. Okay. And walk us through uh, the mentality to go K series. Mentality? Um, a lot of fucking issues, as you can mind gives me. I'm not <laughs> sure why. You know, I get it. Maybe it's because I did a shitty build, but at the end of the day, it's my build, you know. But it's, it takes a lot of time, you know, especially if you're trying to shave a bay yourself. I never had experience in any of it. And this is my first time ever case swapping a car. Trial and error. Trial and error. Um, did you think about like a B series motor? Actually, the car was supposed to be, um, it was supposed to be a fully built single cam. And, okay. But the only reason why I went case swap was because I got the swap cheap. I actually found it on offer up for seven. One of bucks. those I couldn't resist. That's a good deal. Yeah. And <laughs> so when the guy did me dirty in the single cam, I ended up just making the option of saying, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go case swap." And thank God I found that deal on offer up for 700 bucks for the K20Z3 with the six-speed LSD trans. Which is, everything was together? Everything was together oh, except wow. for no harness, no ECU. It was just a swap. But okay. at the end of the day, I just ended up sourcing everything out. I ended up doing my own stuff to it instead of leaving original parts to the car. Okay. Um, all right, so tell us a little bit about the front. What do you got going on? What, were you, what was your vision for it? Honestly, what it has right now on it is just JDM headlights, JDM corners, bumper lights. It has a custom... Um, carbon fiber lip done by Southside Auto Customs in Japan. It has a J the authentic JDM license plates that light up. And basically the front end, as you can just tell, it's, I mean, it's just basically stock, you know, at a nice stance, you know, not necessarily dropped or, you know, slammed. It's for a track, you know, car. And basically the plan was never to have a fucking hole, <laughs> hole in my hood, you know, but I did. I had, that's the only way I was able to get it because due to the fact that I switched out, you know, um, traction bar and had to lift the mounts back to the to the first version of it. Okay. So I wasn't able to drop the motor back down. Otherwise, they would just close normal, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it would close normal. But I actually was able to get in contact with a gentleman in in Mexico, and we're actually making the SIR version, which is never offered here in California or Japan or any other state. Basically, we're doing it in carbon fiber hoods. Wow. So we're offering original style carbon fiber hoods for the original wagons, and we're also offering the SIR style with the lifted center instead of the lowered indention of the hood. Four wagons as well? Four wagons. It's all gonna be four wagons, only wagons, no sedan, no, no hatchback, or CRX or any of that. This is just mainly for a wagon chassis. Cool. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the paint scheme that you got going on. Honestly, it was just to just change it up a little bit. You know, the paint was, as you can tell, it's original paint from 1990. You know, we're talking about 20 some odd years already. That's it's old. Mm -hmm. So I rocked it for a little bit, stock paint. At the end of the day, I still said it's just time to switch it up. So mm -hmm. I did this little paint scheme just to change it up for a couple of months, you know, because the plans is, like I said, is to go ahead and paint the car, you know, and go back to a new paint job so that way it has a new color it's all been all redone you know 
and that's basically my vision for it was just to do something you really don't see on wagons you know, I don't think you've ever seen a paint scheme like this on wagons where it looks like confetti popped on it you yeah, know you just wanted a little bit of fun yeah that's just fine okay that's cool man uh tell us about your suspension setup and what other suspension goodies you have as of right now i have godspeed monomax uh suspension and it has function seven itr lcas because it has rtr itr rear um, lower control arm setup and basically my I'm pretty much gonna leave it the way it is um, as far as suspension wise, but I am gonna um, fix up the, and actually change out the control, like some of the control arms to PCI version, but at the end of the day, I would have to change out the cups on the rear, mm. on the rear shocks. So that's, I'm gonna do PCI, um, you know, tow links and everything else and camera kits and just that way it's all surgical bearings. So that's what I'm gonna do to it. That's the plans for it. Straighten up the bushings. Okay, sweet. And tell us your wheel and tire setup. My wheel and combo right now is actually Advan, you know, um, a bit RGD2s, you know, they're 15 by 35s and it's rocking a Toyo Proxis R888s um, tires. And that's my tire combo, they're 4x100. And then in the, in the rear, tell us a little bit about it. Pretty much it's all stock except for the JDM tail lights, you know, and the uh, Jay's uh, or Charge Speed replica uh, wing, which they never produced for a wagon, but the one that produced it was actually Dana from EF Static in up north. And he actually, the one that came up with the design, chopped up an original one to make it fit a wagon. And he's the one, that's from there he ended up selling it, I believe, and making it to uh, other companies that would, would offer it for us. Oh, that's awesome. That's so, cool. no, that's pretty much about it, you know, in my car club, you know, in Japan, based out of Japan. Southside customs. Cool. Yes, sir. All right, Brian. So tell us, what do we got going on in the interior, man? Pretty much, it's pretty much stock in the inside, um, but we do have the whole interior chassis harness that's been converted over to a street race spec chassis harness, which is all run by switch panels, and then you also have it modified to fit an S two thousand AP one cluster, and basically the Momo steering wheel, Checker Sport hub, you know, K tune shift, a race spec shifter cables and basically dimes shift knob with the uh, paired with the s2000 blue seats you know other than that pretty much it's all stock you know you have the ecu on the other side where it's being shown off with the wire wear you know panel to hold it cool, you know, everything in place very simple but yeah you know a lot of thought process put into this it's been a lot of thoughts and it's been a lot of money because i felt at the end of the day and i, I couldn't cheap out mm -hmm. you know for me, it was a point of tracking it lower, you know, you actually lessen the weight of the car a little bit, you know, and that's the reason why I took out the whole original. It has nothing original of wiring on the vehicle, you know, from engine bay to the back of the taillights. It's all a race spec chassis harness that's been custom built for this car because it's never been one produced for it. That's crazy. You know. And what are the future plans for the interior? Future plans for it is to actually wrap the S2000 seats in the same trying to find the same cloth as the regular wagon seats that'd as, be cool as you can see in the back yeah <laughs> you know wrap them in the same material so that, that way it's not so hot you uh -huh. know because the seats get extremely hot in the fucking in the sun yeah you know and i'm not really one of the fan of the leather seats but <laughs> this is i paired it because it fits my fluffy ass at the end of the day and they're comfortable <laughs> yeah you know they are comfortable okay all right brian so tell us what are we staring at you're staring at a k20z3 with uh, paired with the six-speed LSD trans, um, it's an action. I believe it's an action clutch. I actually got it from a friend of mine. Uh, he's a big YouTuber too, but uh, Vasily Garage. Um, he actually hooked me up with the clutch. But basically, the stock K20 Z3, you know, RBC manifold. Basically, paired with a lot of K2 parts, checker sport, you know, oil thing, coil packs, of course, that which will come onto the K swaps, and just my radiator tuck, my fill pot, and everything else. Pretty much, it's all stock. Just little bolt-ons you know nothing really crazy for power or anything like that yet but uh has it been dyno no it has not been dyno. okay so you're still waiting to do a little yeah more i'm things? still i'm still waiting to do on everything um just yesterday you know i had some issues with the car you know when is it when in reality when i when don't i have really issues with this car but yesterday i had some issues so within a few maybe basically within a few more months i'll probably take it to go get a dyno just to at least how it's more set on a dyno mm -hmm. and it's actually really running better than what it should be running you know because it does have some issues still but it's just basically on a little small little map small street map you know that i drive it on you know technically you're not really supposed to drive it it's supposed to be a startup map but i drive it you know okay. it is what it is because i'm not rich so <laughs> i make do with it you know and i drive it whenever i can once the time comes, hopefully you adjust yeah. that and hopefully it doesn't. Okay. Um, yeah. What other goodies are you planning to do to it? 
like I said, the future plan is basically full boost. You know, it's gonna be a Sidewinder mount kit, you know, for the for the turbo setup, you know, and then basically we'll go all wheel drive, you know, and just have fun on the track with it with an all wheel drive instead of a front wheel drive. Because you, you said that it is a little bit of a spinning, right? Yeah, it is a little bit more of spinning, you know, but it's more of a learning process. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's not basically a rookie mistake or anything like that. It's just car can really handle it, you know, it has mm -hmm. a lot of power for it. It wasn't meant to. Yeah, it wasn't. This motor was never meant to be in this car, you know. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what it is, you know, where I'm running a bigger motor compared to a 1.5, you know, dual point engine that was stock in it, you know. <laughs> a whopping 90 horsepower in a good day. For real, 90, 90 horsepower is when it was actually brand new. You know, but now, I mean, it's just stock K20, you know, it's a good little motor for what it is for the deal I got on it. I can't complain. That's awesome, man. All right, Brian. So thank you so much for taking the time and showing us your build um, and getting a little bit of history as to um, some of the, the reasons as to why you went with the K series. You bought a wagon um, and now in its latest phase. So let's wrap it up with any shout outs. Honestly, bro, my shout outs go to basically mainly it's going to be my, my fiance, you know. She's stuck with me and always helped me out. You know, whether a lot of people say it's your wife built it, whatever it is, we came out of the same bank account. You know, work hard for what we do and we build it. But I do have like my shout out to, you know, these are the people that actually helped me out, you know, and, and are part of the car. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they did give me good deals and I did get good product from them, you know? So it's, of course, it's my, my whole chassis harness and my, and my wire, you know, my wire harness would be wire works and wire wear. You know, those two got down on my harness, you know, so I give them a lot of, I give them a lot of props and I always, they're always there to help me out whenever I do need something. If I need something modified, I call them up and whether it's on a weekend or not, they help me out. But these are my main shout outs, you know, and honestly, truly, and shout outs to a lot of the true friends that, and people that, that are enthusiasts that actually just enjoy a build mm -hmm. instead of really critiquing your cars, you know, right. that's why I give a lot of the shout out to them. the old, true, actually enthusiasts that actually care about a car instead of, you know, a ricer version of it you know because for me a lot of a lot of people would consider this a ricer version but for me it's something unique you really don't see it and it's my car at the end of the day i'm gonna do what i gotta do yeah you know? yeah so you know from my end i appreciate your time uh, i appreciate the fact that you're taking this older uh you know platform and still driving it you know still modifying it you gotta keep the efs alive bro that's the way i look at it you know older chassis i can't go to the newer chassis i can't <laughs> can't do it I yeah. <laughs> can't do it. Old school head, I gotta stick with old school cars. There you go. Well, Brian, thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, time, can't wait for the future plans for it. And um, yeah, it'd be cool to have it on the channel again once it's boosted and all wheel drive. We'll see when that happens. Hopefully, a couple more months, maybe within a year, I should have it done. Sweet, man. All goes well. Cool. Stay tuned.